Here we have a yeah, 1997 Jaguar XJR. The customer brought it in for an MOT prep. And I'll try and get this in the right order. When he phoned up to book it in to start with, he said uh, the battery's dead, where he hasn't been using it. Can't open the boot. Key fob isn't working. Can't open the fuel filler flap. So he can't put any petrol in it for me. So I apologise for that. Obviously not a problem. So when I got it in, got the boot open with the key, started having a look round, thinking oh, he's probably popped a fuse by jump-starting it or doing something. Had to put a new battery on it to start with. All, already been advised by a friend of mine who was an ex-Jag man. These Jags can be a bit sensitive to um, duff batteries or cheap batteries, so put a decent Exide battery on it. Then started to have a, look, a bit of a look round. Checked, did the usual, checked all the fuses. Sure enough, because you've got a big fuse box in the back here and on the lid, tells you all the fuses in all the different various places because you've got a fuse box under here. You've got two fuse boxes in front of the, uh, under the kick panel, under the uh, passenger, the rear passenger seats, both sides. Two in the engine bay. This thing's actually full of electrics and fuses. So, checked on here. And when I started looking around, also, the other thing on the way here, he was told his uh, brake lights weren't working. So I thought, All right, definitely must be a fuse issue. Tested all the lights. High level brake light was working. But the low level brake lights and the light clusters weren't working. Reverse lights weren't working, rear fog lights weren't working. So went through all this fuse schematic, and when this focuses, hopefully it'll focus. Typical, doesn't want to focus, it did when I tested this earlier. Here you go. Fuse number one in this uh, boot fuse box is, surprise, surprise, reverse lights, rear fog lights, interior mirror, and stop lamps. I thought, right, okay, we'll check that. Also, fuse 10 is the boot lid and the fuel filler flap. So, took this cover off, checked fuse number one and fuse number 10, and sure enough, they were both blown. So I thought, oh, that's going to be a nice, simple fix. Replaced both the fuses, but hey-ho, no, still nothing worked. So, just had a little look round. Went to uh, take this fuse box out, just to actually disconnect everything and check continuity in the fuse box, because I thought, well, we've lost everything that's controlled by one fuse. It sounds like we've got a track broken in the fuse box. When I started having a look round, I actually noticed... There was about two inches of water sitting in the boot of this. You can see the tide mark all the way around here. And also, when I took this panel out, the trim panel out from here, just to get to the fuel filler flap, to just sort of stick my finger in here and open it manually, when I lifted this, it was full of water. So I just sort of pulled this little bung bit out, just to let the water out. And it all started running down into the boot. You can still see the damp patch here. This pipe, get a torch on here. This pipe that runs from this drain was missing. So anytime it rained, it just filled the boot up with water. I thought, well, that's not good. Put a new pipe on there. At some point, someone must have taken it out because there's a mark here where there was a grommet where this pipe went. So, did that, took this um, fuse board out to test it, had to lift the whole thing out, and underneath there is a control unit, which is security and locking module. When I disconnected that, water ran out of one of the plugs, and I thought, oh dear, that's not good. So, took the back off. Sure enough, nice burnt out circuit board. Lift the other side out. 
not very good at all. And if I had smellow vision, that's just my doorbell going in the background, you would smell how burnt out this thing is. So, got a second hand one of those. They're nicely available second hand. Don't have to be programmed other than the key fob. Fitted it, obviously drained the boot out, knocked that bung out, made a new bung, put it in there. Fitted the new control unit, put the fuse slots back in, connected everything up, tested everything. Yeah, hey presto, everything's working. Went in, recoded the key fob, this little baby here. Quite simple, get in the car, hold the um, headlamp, flasher, pass, whatever you want to call it, hold that on, turn the ignition to the accessory position so you don't switch the ignition all the way on, then release the flash button and flash the headlights four or five times till you either hear a beep or a click. I had to do it several times because I was expecting to hear a, a, a beep and I wasn't getting it. But after I'd done it a few times, I realised I was getting a click, which is living up for recoding the immobiliser. Then just press all four buttons, one at a time, switch the ignition off, switch it back on, and sure enough, key fob starts working. Everything else, everything on it works. So, if you're getting strange electrical faults on these, check your boot, make sure it hasn't got a load of water in it. You might have to replace this, um, what's it called? Security and locking module. Now, as long as you get the right part number, you can get a second hand one of these. They don't have to go down to the dealer to be coded. They'll work plug and play, work straight away. Only thing you've got to do, code your key fob, as I said. And yes, yeah. so one Jag back up and running, all electric sorted out just for the sake of someone who obviously did something to this car and didn't bother putting that pipe back on. So, slap on the wrist for them. Don't know who they were. Someone in the dim and distant past because the customer has said, oh, I've been getting condensation in this car for ages. So that's obviously the answer. So she's all good to go.